Hey guys, I hope that I'm live right now. If you guys are able to listen to me properly as well as there's no issues for the audio or the video, please let me know. Good evening everyone. Good evening. I hope that I'm live right now. If you guys are able to listen to me properly as well as there's no issues with the audio or the video, uh, please let me know. Okay, great guys. Amazing. Amazing. So today we are going to continue with our uh, open CV itself. Yesterday I got a lot of message from many people saying they were not able to do it on their local laptops. So I figured out a way how can we do the project or directly on Google Collab itself so that uh, nobody is facing any kind of problems making the project or learning open CV itself. So I did that yesterday. Yesterday we, I was not able to take up a class because uh, I don't know why I was not feeling well. I think so it was due to the stress itself. So no issues in that. We'll be continuing our class from today and I don't feel that there should be any issues for tomorrow. Maroj, you don't have to worry. All that tension is up to me to take care of. Okay, you just focus upon the class itself. <clears throat> okay. Okay, guys. So, uh... Okay, can you guys, uh, okay, let us get started with that. What I'll be doing is I'll be opening up collab. Okay. I'll be opening up collab. I'll be opening up a new notebook itself. I will be creating a new notebook. So as soon as I'm opening collab, there's this button down below saying new notebook right over here. Okay. New notebook. That's going to click on that. That is going to create me a new notebook. And this is where we will be writing all our code. Uh, for the same, so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, I am able to understand many of you were facing a lot of difficulties with VS code and everything else. So I thought that no issues. Let me figure out a way so that we are able to do the project inside of Google Colab. And I have figured out a way. So we'll be continuing from right over here itself. So you don't have to worry about it. Okay. Yesterday there was no class. I was not feeling well. That is the reason why uh, I didn't have a class yesterday. Okay. Also, what are the future opportunities for BCA students? See, if you want to get into software engineering, you want to get into full stack, you want to get into data science, start learning about it immediately. That is your opportunities that are available to you. Okay. Okay. Yes, Veena, you are eligible for uh, the certificates. You don't have to worry about it. Shall we start with our today's class guys? Please let me know. Shall we start with our today's class guys? Please let me know. Yes, Prathmesh, you are eligible for the certificate. You don't have to worry about it. <clears throat> okay, great guys. So let's get started right away. Let's not waste any time. Yesterday also we didn't add a class. So I don't want to waste any opportunity in the learning process. Okay, so let me just open it for you guys. And right now we are going to start with our stuff itself, I guess. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is everybody able to see my screen guys? Uh, please let me know. Is everybody able to see my screen guys? Please let me know guys. Is everybody able to see my screen? Please let me know. Okay, guys, uh, again, just to recap a bit. Okay. Uh, because many of you guys were complaining yesterday that you guys were not able to see or download the stuff properly. That is the reason why I decided that we will be conducting our class directly on, uh, your collab itself instead of doing anything else. So I hope that everything should be, uh, like easy for you guys. You shouldn't be facing any kinds of problems at all. Okay. Uh, so let's keep that in mind and let's start coding. Okay. 
okay so our aim is very simple we want to just remove okay the background of an image using uh, your open cv i want to replace it with a picture as simple as that are you guys able to understand this please do let me know that is what we want to do we want to remove the video of and uh, and just get the video back with the background removed completely that is what we want to do are you guys able to understand this please let me know guys I don't think so. It should be died that hard for us, but uh, still, there will be a lot of problems that we will be facing. Uh, let's try to make sure that we are not facing those problems. Uh, there will be some hurdles in the way. We'll try to figure out the solution for that as we go on as well. Okay. So the first thing, of course, what we want is computer vision. Okay, open CV itself. That is CV two. So we are going to import CV2. That is the first thing. Let me just increase the size so that you guys are able to see. Uh, the first thing that we want is CV2 guys. That is what we want to import. Along with that, I want to import another library of uh, Python. So CV2 library, we are already very familiar with. That is the open CV library. There's another library of Python. Okay. That is called as the NumPy library guys. Okay. That is called as the NumPy library. Now you guys must have learned about matrix and all these kind of stuff, matrix multiplications and all these stuff when you were in college or in school, right? In mathematics, have you guys uh, learned about it? Please let me know. Have you guys learned about matrix multiplication, addition, all these kind of stuff? Please let me know guys. <clears throat> So all these matrix multiplications and all these matrix related questions that are there, there's a library in Python It's called as the NumPy library guys or numerical Python library that basically helps us deal with them. Okay. Helps us deal with all the matrix and everything. So like we have already studied about images, right? Images are nothing else but two dimensional matrices. Okay. By black and white images are two dimensional matrices. Uh, your RGB, um, Images that is your colored images are basically a three dimensional matrices with a depth of three. Okay. So all these things we have already heard about. So whatever calculations, whatever, uh, numerical things that we want to do on top of these matrices that will help us will be helped by NumPy as a library. Okay. That is the use of NumPy guys. Okay. Now NumPy is a very lengthy term. It's like five letters. So every single time I have to use the library NumPy, I have to type a lot of words. I have to type a lot of things. Okay. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to assign a nickname. Okay. I want to assign a nickname to NumPy guys. And I'm going to call it as NP. Okay. I'm going to call it as NP. So I'm going to import NumPy and I'm going to assign a nickname to it. That is NP. You can assign it any nickname. You can assign it as SJ, UI, Shorya as well. You can do that. But by the conventions of Python programming itself, we usually term it as NP guys. Okay. We usually turn uh, term it as NP. Now I'm going to run this particular line of code. It will import uh, for us the CV2 package as well as the NumPy package as well. Once that has been done, we want to get a particular video. Okay. We want to get a particular video for us. Now, of course, I don't have any videos, but what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to go to, let's assume a random uh, YouTube itself. And I'm going to take up YouTube from incognito mode. If that's the case, let me go to the incognito mode. Let me go to YouTube. Let me get a green screen. CRWN green, SCRWN screen video. And I'm going to take up a green screen video of, let's see, uh, this looks a good video. Free HD exclusive footage, blah, 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 blah. Okay. It has a lot of shit in front of the video and everything else. So we will have to clean it out. No issues. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to copy this particular URL. I'm going to search for a YouTube video downloader. And I'm going to format it to MP4. Okay, I want an MP4 format. Let's take up the MP4 format to be 1080p. I think so that would be very big. 
let's take it up to be 720p itself let's download it so i think so that will help us download the video for us give it a second let us see if it downloads for us or not because it has already downloaded it for us the video i suppose we need to edit this video so that we are only getting the part of the video that we actually want so let us try to edit it yeah i don't think so this is working for us or is it working I will just stop it. I will edit it with Slim Champ. Okay, that is not a software that I want. Okay, so let me find that file for you guys. Okay, I don't want the initial video itself. I just want the second half of the video. So open with, let us open it with Flims and TV. Let us see if this helps us to edit the video properly. Uh, I just want to remove the first half of the video itself. Just the normal video that we want. So uh, give me a second guys. Let get some five seconds worth of video from this it is loading itself up so it will take us some time to get the video as well okay so we got it we will go into edit we are going to trim the video and uh, so it will open it up in I think so two four seconds. And it is taking us some time to get the video into the editor, I guess. Wait for it. Okay. We don't want all this part. We want only this particular part of the drifting. And we want it for just like 5-10 seconds itself. That should be more than sufficient. Save as a copy. We'll save it to our desktop itself. As video. A video mp 4 That is what I'm naming it as. So this should get us our video that we want. It is still loading for us. I've just trimmed the video guys. Nothing else. Okay. I've just trimmed the video. You can use any kind of video that you want. You can shoot your own video as well. Initially, I planned on shooting my own video, but now I've misplaced it. I don't know where I had <laughs> saved that video itself. But uh, no issues in that. Once the video has been saved for us, we should be able to get our access on the desktop itself. Feel so it has not yet been added. So I think so it is still saving it up. Okay. Five seconds video that is there. But where is it? I think so. It would have been saved by now. Let us open up our collab. Let us upload our video itself. So we are going to upload a file right over here. We know how to upload a file. Video.mp4 that is the file we want to upload. Let us upload the video.mp4 file. As you are able to see, it is getting uploaded right now. So we are just waiting for it to get uploaded. So it has been uploaded for us almost. Yes, it has been uploaded. Now we are going to copy the path for this particular file. So just hover over the file and click on copy path. That will copy the path of the file itself. And now this is the file that we are going to use guys. This is the file that we are going to use. So we are going to create a variable called as video. Video is equals to cv2 dot video capture. Okay, we are going to use uh, video capture to capture exactly what is happening in the video itself. Video.mp4, that is the name of the video. So we are going to paste the path to the video itself right over here. So cv2.video capture is basically used to capture the video itself. Okay, to understand what is happening in the video, just like I am read, that is image read. We have already seen that, right? To access the Goku image. Okay, I am read used to read the image right over here. It's a video itself. So the term that we use is video capture. Secondly, we need to have a background for that video as well. Okay, we need to have a background for the video. I'm going to go into images and uh, airport 
let us search for some roads for drifting get a road for drifting itself okay this feels like a nice road to drift our car on let us take this particular video or uh, we can take some other pictures that we like if there are any this feels like a nice picture but it is way too short for us to actually use all these are from shutterstock drift road images drift road images and so here we should be able to get a good image this looks fine this is a big image but there are a lot of different shit on it we'll drift our roads on this that or we can drift it on this as well this also looks like a road hey okay, right let's take this particular video let us save this video on our image as back dot this back dot jpg save it as back okay go back will upload our image as well because there are two parts right there are two parts to this the first one is basically your uh video which is a green screen video itself and the second one is your uh image that you want to replace this green screen with so you are having this back image that we are having back dot jpg and once it has been uploaded we are going to create our image variable okay now we need that image as well so i'm going to create an image image is equals to cv2 dot im read we have already seen this we need to get the uh, path to our image so for that we are just going to click on these three dots copy path come back right here paste it inside of the inverted uh, quotation marks and once we are able to do that let us run this let us see if it does not makes any changes great it has no issues the next thing that we want to do is we want to read the video frame by frame okay because try to understand this guys uh every frame that is going to so and video think about it what is a video guys think about it what is a video video is nothing else but a set of frames being uh, being connected to each other means set of images being there that has been connected to each other over a period of time are you guys able to understand this please let me know are you guys able to understand this please do let me know guys like if you think about it a video is nothing else but just a set of images okay set of images that has been connected to each other and that you are continuously seeing seeing over time so these images are called as your frames okay these images that you see are called as your frames guys okay so now when you want to remove the background remove the green screen okay and impose an image on top of it you will have to go through each and every frame each and every picture remove the background okay remove the green color and replace it by the picture okay that is what you will have to do so you will have to go frame by frame okay so to do that there is a code inside of uh, collab okay to get those frames okay there is a code uh, in collab that is called as your video dot read okay your video dot read okay so what we are going to do is you are going to take the r e t ret okay that is your uh, you don't want that okay so that is bullshit uh, dot frame okay the frame is basically keeping your uh, pictures right over there for you okay video dot read okay this is what is happening this is what we want okay this is what we want guys okay we want our frame our images this is our thing that we need okay that is given to us by video dot read red is something that we are not very considerate towards we are not going to use it if i use it we will be letting you guys know but right now we are just concerned with frame we want to get those frames individually for that we are using video dot read right now okay now what we are going to do is we are going to resize so if you are working on a 1080p okay video or 720p video itself it is going to take you a lot of time to process it okay because again videos are there the larger the video the more the time you will be taking to actually process that 
and your image and your video are not of the same size please think about it as well your image and your video your image is 1360 uh, something p or something like that and your video is 1080p so the size of your image and your video are not same so first we need to bring them to the same uh, <clears throat> size itself so that we are able to use it without keeping them of the same size we cannot use it guys so the first thing that we are going to use is the cv2 dot resize attribute okay cv2 dot resize method resize helps you to resize the shape okay of or the size of a video or an image okay right now first we'll do it for the video itself right now what we have done is video will be referred to you guys by frame okay from now onwards video will be referred to you guys by frame because right now a video has been distributed into frames and that is what we are going to work upon so first we need to reframe every resize every frame that exists the frame is equals to cv2 dot resize okay and it is going to take a frame that is what we want to resize so we want to resize the current frame and what is the size that we want to resize it to so i want to resize it to 640 by 480p okay that is a smaller size itself and our image as well i am a g e image is equals to cv2 dot resize okay we have to resize our image as well of the same shape that is 640 comma 480 okay you can take up the shape of the image or the frame as whatever is suited according to you you can take it up to be 500 by 250 or something like that as well that is totally up to you these are some standard numbers for a 480p video or a 480p um like image itself these are some standard numbers i'm taking up but otherwise you can take it up to any number that you want okay that is totally up to you i will definitely suggest you guys to stick with the standard numbers itself i see don't take it okay. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is we want to remove the uh, you are having your green values. Okay, you are having a green background right in the image. You guys remember that you are having a green background in the image. You guys remember that? Please let me know. Guys, you guys remember the green image that was there? Please let me know. What is red? Red we don't use right now. Okay, you don't need to concern yourself with red. Okay, we are not going to use red. We are only concerned with getting the frames. Okay. We are only concerned with getting the frames itself, guys. That is the reason why we are not using red and we are not discussing so that we are not confusing ourselves with something else. But if you still want to know about red, once you have completed this, I will be letting you guys know. Okay. Okay, once we are able to complete this, uh, we will be understanding that as well. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what was I saying before this? I forgot. <laughs> you guys uh, made me remember what uh, I was saying before this. Please let me know. Okay, yeah, we want to remove our green color, guys. Please not forget, we want to remove our green color. So the green color might range in a particular values of colors itself, right? It is not exactly green. Okay, it is. it cannot always be exactly green. For example, if I'm taking a video of mine with a green screen behind me, you guys also know that there will be some shadows on top of it. There will be some other colors coming on top of it as well. Okay, are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. You guys able to understand this please let me know so your green color might range in a particular uh, values okay a range of values that you want to remove not just exactly a particular green color but a range of green colors that you want to remove at some particular point of time so those range of green colors will have an upper bound and a lower bound range right an upper range and a lower range between which any value that is there you want it to be removed 
Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. Great. So what we are going to do right now is, are if I am going again. Okay. So what we are going to do is we are going to define those values right now, guys. Okay. That is what we are going to do. If okay, we are going to define those values right now for us, what is going to be the upper range of values of green and what is going to be lower range of values of green. Okay. Now, like I said, NumPy deals with matrices. Okay. Matrix can be of one dimension as well, right? It, it is not compulsory for matrices to be of two dimension, three dimensions, or even 15 different dimensions as well. Matrices can be of just one dimension as well. So right over here, you are going to use the uh, red, green, and blue values. Okay. You're going to use the red, green, and blue values. So in that case, we can put those values inside of a matrix. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. We can put those red, green and blue values inside of a matrix. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. So that matrix can be created using NumPy. Okay. That matrix can be created using NumPy. Let us look at this guys. U upper bound green. Okay. Upper brown green is equals to NP dot uh, ARR array. Okay. That is basically going to create a matrix for you. Okay. NP dot array is going to create a matrix for you. That is going to look like uh, 104. I'm going to take up some defaults values guys that I found on the internet. Uh, this is not my values. These are some default values that I found on the internet. Later on, we can tweak with this as well. These are some default values that I've seen over the internet. These are not my values. We'll tweak with it uh, once we are able to complete our code. Okay. Green is equals to NP dot ARRAY array. And then you are having your 30 comma 30 comma 0. Okay, that is the values that we are putting up right over here. Again, these two values are not something that I have come up with my head. I just found them on the internet that these are the upper green and lower green values that we can use. And that is the reason why I'm just using them. Okay, there's no uh, like background to it. Okay, no understanding towards it. Okay, so like I said, what we are doing is we are creating a list of three numbers. Okay, 104. 153 and 70. We are creating a list of three numbers guys. And this list is something that we are changing it into a NP array. Okay. Or a NumPy array guys. This array is a 1D array or a one dimensional array. Okay. Now these terms are something that you should be able to understand from your mathematics itself. One dimensional matrix, two dimensional matrix, three dimensional matrix itself. The only thing right over here is that you are converting a Python list to a NumPy array. Okay. There is a very big reason why we are doing that. If you guys are interested, then I will let you guys know. Otherwise we can just move on with the code. Okay. It basically makes your code work a lot more optimized, a lot more faster than normal Python guys. Okay. A lot more faster, a lot more efficient and optimized when compared to your Python lists. Okay. So that is the reason we can even see this right now as well. Let me show it to you. If you guys want to know, uh, let me open up Git and let me go to Python for data science. Go to NumPy part one. We'll just copy the code from here instead of writing it again. So this code that I'm going to show you guys, this is something that I hope that you guys will be able to understand very easily and there won't be any issues with that. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create a list and I'm going to create a NumPy array. Okay. These are the two things that I'm going to do. First, I'm going to import another library called as time. Okay. This is a time library by uh, Python. Okay. Which helps you to basically track time. Okay. Anything that you need to do related to time in Python that you get it done using this time attribute itself, time library itself, as simple as that. Anything related to time that you want to do inside of Python, you do it using the time library itself. Now, once I've opened it up, I want you guys to create a NumPy array. 
I'm going to call it as I'm just going to copy paste the code from here. I don't want to write the entire code again and again. So right over here, V. So what I've done right over here is that I've created a random. Okay, I've created. A, I will explain Hari Krishnan forty in five minutes. Okay, so X is equal to NP dot random dot rand and one billion. I hope that this is one billion. Okay, let me just check. This is one billion guys. Okay, so I've created a list of one billion random numbers ranging from zero to one. Okay, this will basically create you a list. Okay, of one billion elements, guys. One billion elements. Are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know. Here I'm creating a list of one billion elements. Okay, that are range between zero to one. So there will be one billion elements having values either zero. 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.9 or something like that up till one. Okay, so it's a random uh, list of one billion elements, guys. So let me just create it. As you will be able to see, our RAM will start increasing, guys. Okay, you will be able to see that our RAM will start increasing, guys, because uh, this list of one billion elements will be put inside of your RAM. Okay, your RAM will immediately get. Utilize from right over here as you're able to see we have already utilized 7.48 GBs of RAM. So if you are not using okay, if you are not using uh, Google Colab, if you are doing this on your own local laptop and your laptop has less uh, than nine gigs of RAM, your laptop will crash immediately. Okay, your laptop will crash immediately, guys. So once we have done this, okay, once we have created our one billion parameter. Uh, random array itself what we are going to do is we are going to calculate the mean okay we are going to calculate the mean using your normal methods of python okay right over here we have uh, used the normal methods of python guys so what i'm going to do is for example i want to track how fast an athlete is able to run how will i do that can you guys let me know okay if i want to track how fast an athlete can run how will I do that? Could you guys let me know? So you have a clock. Okay, you have a clock and you want to track how fast an athlete can run. What would you do guys? Please let me know. You have a clock and you want to check how fast an athlete can run. What would you do guys? Basically, I want you guys to calculate the time of how much time did it took for the athlete to run a particular distance. Okay. How would you do that? But just having a watch guys. Okay. Start time end time, right? You will look at the clock when he's starting to run. Once he has completed running, you will again look at the clock and you will get the difference. And that is the time that the athlete took to run that particular distance. Am I, are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. When this athlete is starting to run, you will look at your clock. We'll get the start time for the athlete. Once the athlete finishes running, okay, then you will again look at the clock. You will take the difference between the start and the end times. And that is how you are able to get the, how much time it took by the athlete, right? So right over here, our athlete is calculating our mean of this 1 billion parameter array. Okay, our athlete is calculating the mean of this 1 billion parameter array. Now calculating mean is very simple. Okay. Sum of all the elements inside of X divided by the length of X. Am I right guys? Sum of all the elements present inside of X divided by the total number of elements present inside of X, right? For that Python has already given you a sum par uh, some method. Okay. Some function which basically gives you the sum of all the elements that is present inside of this list called as X. Okay, and then we are dividing it by the length of X that gives us the number of elements present inside of X guys that is giving us the mean. Okay, and to take to understand how much time it took for mean to execute. We are noting down the time. So time dot time method. Okay, basically gives you at what time. Okay, this particular line of code, the highlighted line of code executed itself. Okay, at what particular date, at what particular hour, at what particular minute, at what particular second, at what particular millisecond as well, this particular line of code started executing. 
Similar to that, right over here as well, we are looking at the clock. Okay, time dot time again. When this particular line, this highlighted part of line started executing, right? And then we are going to subtract the start from it to get how much time it took for the second line of code to execute. Are you guys able to understand? Think about time dot time as looking at your clock. Okay, think about time dot time as looking at your clock, guys. Okay, so at what time it started? Okay, and at what time it ended? Subtract it. You will get how much time it took for the mean element to actually get your result. Okay, so I'm going to run this particular line of code and we'll be able to see that uh, how much time does it take via using normal Python. Okay, via using normal Python to calculate the mean of a particular array, guys. Okay, so as you're able to see, it is still calculating it. It is taking a lot of time. Okay, it is still calculating it. We are not even touching it. It is still running right now. I think so it will take at least a minute or two to run. Up to that point of time, if you guys have any questions or queries, please let me know. Okay, I was not able to answer most of your queries while teaching. So please let me know right now if you guys have any questions or queries. Apna collab ka link de do na bhaiya update hota rahega download wala cheez hum log karenge code update hota rahega. So I will not be sharing the collab notebook with you. What if the objects in the video has the same range of color? It will remove those as well. Yes, of course, Rahul, it will remove those. What technology should we use to uh, learn to become software developer? Uh, first, data structures, algorithms, computer programming. Once you have completed that, choose between data analysis or uh, full stack web development. Uh, depending upon what you are choosing the pathway, you can do that. How to use webcam? Because we are using Google Colab, we will not be able to use webcam. Okay. Can we use the frame variable without uh, red? No. See, uh, red is basically your return value. Okay. So whenever your uh, read function executes, okay, it will return whether it was able to read it properly or not. Okay. Right now, guys, I'm explaining this particular line of code for those guys who are not able to understand it at that point of time. Okay. This red you guys were asking me. Please understand that this particular line, okay, when it is executing, okay, video dot read, okay. Either it can read the video or it can face some problems reading the video, right? Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. Either CV2 that is computer vision can read the video or it can face some problem reading the video. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know guys. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. So what is happening right over here is that if it is able to read the video, the frame is containing all the frames for the video itself. Okay. And return. Okay. The RET basically means RET val. Okay. Or return value. Okay. Return value. It will be one. And it was able to read the video successfully. Okay. It, it was able to read the video successfully. Okay. And if it was facing any kind of problems, RET will contain the value of zero that it was not able to read the video successfully. There was some issue in reading the video. Okay. That is what this red means. And I don't want you guys to be confused. That is the reason why I said that now consider yourself just focused upon frame itself. Okay. What's the solution for that? If the objects are being removed in the video, then what's the point of using it in the first place? Rahul, just don't wear green color clothes. Otherwise, only your head will be floating around in the entire video. As simple as that. Okay. Uh, Wankar Suraj, just use Google Colab. It won't crash. Okay, that is the reason why we are using Google Colab. Okay, so right over here, as you're able to see, uh, it took it almost 90 seconds. Okay, almost one and a half minutes or 90 seconds to run the mean line of code. Are you guys able to see this? Please let me know guys. No, you cannot. Hari Krishna potty, you cannot. I've already answered that. So as you're able to see guys, it took 90 seconds or one and a half minutes to actually run all these things. Okay. Uh, yes, Sheetal, it always ranges between zero and one. So what we are going to do right now is we are going to do the exact same thing using your NP okay, or NumPy. Okay, we are going to do the exact same thing using NumPy guys. Okay, we are not going to change anything. Okay, we are having again the start time. Okay, time dot time. Time is the library and this time is the method out of it. Okay, basically you are saying that from the toolbox called as time, I am taking out the method that is called as time as well. Okay, from the toolbox called as time, 
I'm taking out a method that is called as time as well. Okay, so I'm going to and the to take the mean using numpy. You just have to write np. Okay, to take the mean using numpy, you just have to write np dot mean guys. Np dot mean of x will automatically calculate uh, for you what is the mean of x guys. As simple as that. So if I'm running this particular line of code, if I'm running this particular line of code, you are able to see that it does that in just one second. Okay, it calculates the mean of a one billion parameter list. In just one second, guys. Sometimes it even takes less than that. Okay, sometimes it takes just like 0 0.6, 0 0.7 seconds as well. Okay, so you guys are able to see how fast, okay, how fast it is able to calculate the mean for you. That is the reason why NumPy is so famous and so in use. If you're going into data science, if you're going into any other stream as well, you'll be using NumPy a lot of time, guys. Okay, a lot of time. This is the reason why we don't use lists and we use NumPy because lists are so slow and NumPy are so quick as simple as that. Okay? As simple as that guys. So once we are done with this, okay, once you guys are able to understand why we use uh, NumPy instead of just lists, I'm going to delete this. We don't require it. It was just something I wanted you guys to understand. Okay. Now that you have understood it. Okay. Somebody asked why three values. Okay. Why not just like put up the green value itself. Now guys try to understand this, that there are not just like you have olive green. You really feel that olive green is just green itself. Some shade of green. No, it basically has some other colors mixed into it as well. That is the reason why it is olive green. Your light green is not light green. It is basically yellow, a little bit of yellow, white and green mixed inside of it. Okay. Just think about it guys, uh, RGB, search for RGB guys, so just think about it. This is also green. Okay. Let us take a green color, Increase this to here. So right over here, this is also a green color guys. It has 228 of green and 124 of red. It can have full green and red as well. It is still green guys. It is still green. This is a color. This color is basically having a RGB value of 124, 255 and zero. It is still a green color guys. It is still a green color. Are you guys able to see this? Are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know. NumPy is also a library just like OpenCV. Okay. Just like OpenCV is a library. The guys able to understand this and see this, please let me know guys, which is better full stack development or data uh, analysis. Uh, that's a personal choice. My choice would be if you're from good college, go with data science. If you're not from good college, go with full stack. So that is the reason why when I'm taking up the upper bound and lower bound color values as well, I'm taking it for a particular range of values that range. So let us look at 104, 155 and 70. Okay. What does that look like? 104. Then you are having 153 and then you are having your color as 70. Let us look at what it looks like. So this is also a type of green color guys. Okay. This is also a type of green color right over here. Let us look at the second particular color guy 30, 30, 0. Okay. Let us look at that as well. So let's put it up at 30. Okay. Let us put it up at 30. Let's put it up as 0. Okay. So this is like a very dark muddy green color. Okay. Very dark muddy green color. Is it necessary to do D P and C okay. D S I think so. He wants to ask uh, necessary to do C P. Yes, it is necessary to do C P is the exact same thing as reading NCRT, but not preparing for J mains and advance. You're preparing for J mains and advance that is completed programming. Okay. So as you're able to see, this is your green muddy green color itself that you are able to see right over here. Okay. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know guys. Now why have we chosen these two uh, colors itself? Like because it is something that is a representation of green colors on the two ends of a spectrum itself. Okay. Okay. Great guys. The next thing that we want to do is we want to create a mask guys. Okay. We want to create a mask. Now, what do I mean by a mask guy? So a mask will basically take out. Okay. It will take out. Just try to understand this guys. 
what we want is we want to remove the green color right guys please do let me know we want to remove the green color okay so for that what we are doing is we are creating a mask okay that is going to mask all the green color inside of your image that lies between the upper green and your lower green values okay it is going to take out okay it is going to just like highlight just think about it as highlighting okay think about it as highlighting all the values inside of your video inside of your frame okay that has it's uh, rgb values in this particular range itself okay so we are going to create a mask okay that is going to highlight all the values inside of your frame okay that has these particular that has this value between these ranges itself that is very simple guys mask also cv2 dot in range okay because we want to change check whether these are in range or not okay in range all the values from frame okay all the values from frame that lies in between this lower green and upper green values okay are you guys able to understand this mask please do let me know are you guys able to understand uh, how we created this mask please do let me know we're going to check up every single pixel okay we are going to check up every single pixel from our frame itself that lies inside of the range of lower green and upper green values and we are going to highlight it that highlighted portion is our mask okay the highlighted portion is our mask guys the guys able to understand this concept of masks please do let me know Are you guys able to understand this concept of, for data science? Do we need CP for any job? If you are dreaming of getting into an IT company for any job, bar it be cyber security, full stack development, cloud computing, testing, you have to go with software engineering, data science, data analyst, data engineering, anything and everything related to an IT field. You have to do data structures and algorithms and competitive programming. You cannot get into companies without that. Whoever is saying you that you can get into companies without that, they themselves don't know anything. They, they are shit. Okay. Stop listening to them very well. Okay. So that is what we have done right over here. The next thing that we are going to do right now is we are going to do. So you guys know bitwise and operation, right? You guys know a bitwise and operation. Please do let me know. Do you know a bitwise and operation guys? Please do let me know. Leave the socks. Okay. So this bitwise and what we have done right over here as a mask. Okay. That we have created is that the portion that is green is now highlighted in white. Okay. That is one. Okay. The portion that is in green is now highlighted in white guys it is one okay are you guys able to understand this please let me know it is in one guys because it has been highlighted for us now what we are going to do is we are going to take a bitwise and okay with our current uh frame itself we are going to take up a bitwise and with our current frame so if we are having something like this okay think about it all the green value inside of your picture okay think about it guys think about it okay think imagine this all the um green area inside of your uh, picture is now one okay all the green area inside of your picture is now one and your uh, you are taking an and with your video with what with your original image itself what will you get guys you guys let me know what will you get at the end please let me know think about it okay let let us go with an image itself so that you guys are able to understand this What would you get guys if you are having, okay, these are two images. Let us see this. There are two images right over here. This is your original image. This is a green and uh, so this is your green value. Okay. And this is your uh, object right over here. Okay. And we are having another value, right? Another picture of the same uh, kind itself right over here in which your uh, green values have now been having the value of one. Okay. The green values have the value of one because that is where you were able to identify some green values right over here. Okay. And then you are having zeros right over here guys. Okay. Zeros right over here. That is your object that is there in the image. We're taking a bitwise and operation right over here. You're taking a bitwise 
and operation right over here what would you get guys what would you get please let me know what would you get guys please let me know think about it okay this is some value okay this is some value right over here you are taking a bitwise operation with one right over here so what will be that value guys Guys, this is like, this has some value inside of it, right? If you are taking some value and having a bitwise operation of, and it is going to be the exact same value right now. Okay. It is going to be exact. Only green will remain rest. Yes, guys, only green will remain. The object will be deleted from here. The object will be deleted because any object taking up with zero, that will result in zero, but everything else will be the same value that is there right over here. It will always be green in color. There's always whatever green portion of your entire video was that will be taken out and your object will get deleted. Okay. Your object will get deleted from right over there. Only the green value will be taken out. Okay. Only the green value of your image will be taken out. Your object will get deleted after this particular step. So we are going to do right that itself. Okay. We're going to do, okay. Uh, is equals to CV two dot bit wise underscore and right over here frame comma so what we want to do the uh, bitwise and on guys okay we want to send the final result to frame okay but what is going to be our bitwise and guys it is going to be between our frame and our mask right so frame and our mask is equals to mask Okay. That is what we are going to perform our bitwise operation on. Okay. We are going to perform. So bitwise and on two images is always going to be the image itself. Right guys. Bitwise and on two images is always going to be this exact same image. There's no going to be no change on top of it. Think about it. If two images are the exact same images, we are going to perform a bitwise and we're going to get the exact same image at the end of the day. There's going to be no change with the image. But performing a bitwise and with a mask, okay, that is what is going to give us our green color. Okay, that is going to give us our green color, guys. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. Are you going to understand this? Please let me know, guys. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. Because we are doing frame free, still a bit confusing. Okay, if people are still confused, how can I make you guys understand this? Okay, let us do one thing. Let us do one thing. Let me do something for you. Let me get you guys some good examples for this. Okay, right over here, I won't be able to produce you guys for you guys some examples because I want you guys to be shown some exact examples of what is happening right over here. So what happens when I write this particular line of sentence? What is this mask? Okay. How does it look like? I want you guys to understand that as well. So let us do uh, one thing. Let me do one thing. I will collect all these examples for you guys. Okay. Uh, why mask is a mask? Uh, okay. Because mask is the mask that we have created. And this mask is basically like uh, the question that where is the mask? Okay. Like mask is also an English term. Okay. So if you are naming this as M, okay, then we can put up M directly right over here. So mask is equals to M. Okay. Let us do one thing. No issues in that. I will get all the pictures of what is internally happening right over here. Okay. Then, okay. When I'm writing this particular line of code, what is happening to the image? Okay. Then uh, if I'm writing this particular line of code, what is actually happening to the image itself? Because right over here, I won't be able to show it to you guys inside of collab. So, uh, explain and of frame or frame. So one and one is always one. So frame and frame is always going to give you the frame itself. It's not going to change it. You just need to put up three inputs, two images, and then your mask. These are the three inputs that Britwise and right over here uses. That is the reason why we are providing the same image twice. And then the mask that we want to get the and with. Okay.
why mask is equals to mask so it is basically like this particular question is asking name of the mask is and then that is the name okay so if i'm changing the name of the mask as m so here it is asking what is the name of the mask okay this is a question which what is mask okay you have to specify mask is equals to m okay because our mask was already named as mask itself that is the reason why it was written as mask is equals to mask okay Okay, let me show you guys the attendance for today. No issues in that guys. I will get you some examples tomorrow so that you guys are able to easily understand the concepts because understanding concepts is more important rather than just going over the code that won't help you guys at all. Okay. So I want you guys to understand the examples uh, perfectly. What is internally happening with the code? Only then you will be able to get a good grasp over the uh, things itself. So you don't have to worry about it. Okay. I'll bring some pictures for you guys tomorrow so that you guys are able to understand it completely. Okay. Tell me about cyber security. I choose it for my internship, uh, cyber security. Okay. So what is cyber security for asking me? Basically, uh, it is the job of not letting anybody else open up your locks. Okay. It is basically like, uh, you are having thousands of locks that are there. You have to build locks so that nobody is able to open up your safe or else you have to break into locks to into your own locks to figure out uh, how safe your safes are okay, as simple as that. Okay. So right over here, I've provided you guys with the attendance link itself okay, in the live chat. Uh, I might be extending the number of days of the bootcamp by one or two days to make sure that you guys are able to understand it uh, very well. So do cyber security or ethical hacking requires a lot of money in terms of taking paid course, actually not Diksha. For example, Defton also offers that it is like 3,500 rupees by a particular person who is a cyber security expert at uh, Google and a hall of famer at Google as well. So if you find the correct place where you are able to understand stuff, then no, it does not require a lot of time or efforts or even money for doing that. Just don't be fooled. Okay, I've provided you guys with the attendance link right over here and uh, you guys will be able to access the attendance from here guys. Okay. Okay guys, we'll meet tomorrow once again. We'll continue from right over there. I'll bring some examples for you guys so that you guys are able to understand it very carefully. Okay. Thank you so much guys. Thank you. Thank you.